Lesson 7.1b, Solving Inequalities Involving Addition and Subtraction. We can use properties of inequality to solve inequalities involving addition and subtraction of rational numbers. So remember, rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as the ratio of two integers, like fractions. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers, and that includes zero. The addition property of equality states that we can add the same number to both sides of an equation, and the new equation will have the same solution. So that's what we've been doing all before this chapter, this module. So if we have 2y minus 4 equals 8, we can use the addition property of equality to add 4 to each side, and we'll have 2y equals 12. And the subtraction property of equality states that we can subtract the same number from each side of an equation, and the new equation will have the same solution. So if we have a plus 5 here, we can subtract 5 from each side. Remember, these create zero pairs and they get eliminated, right? Oh, my A is not correct. There we go. So those are the properties of equality. The properties of inequality are similar to the properties of equality. The addition property of inequality says we can add the same number to both sides of an inequality, and the inequality will remain true. If we have y minus 10 is less than 6, we can do a plus 10 on each side. That will eliminate this minus 10. On this side, we'll have 16, and we'll know that y is some number that's less than 16. So it could be 15, 14, 13. It could be negative 5, as long as it's less than 16. And the subtraction property of inequality says we could subtract the same number from both sides of an inequality, and the inequality will remain true. So if we have 6 plus a, and that's greater than 8, we can take away 6 from this side and take away 6 from this side. That'll eliminate this, and on this side we'll have a 2. We know that a is any number that is greater than 2. When we graph an inequality on a number line, we use an open circle or a closed circle. The open circle shows that the number is not included, so I want you to think of this as the O in not. Okay, so if we have x is greater than negative 1, well, since it's greater than negative 1, it can't be negative 1. It has to be greater than that. So it's not included. Negative 1 is not included. It has an open circle like the O in not. And our arrow is pointing to the right because it's any number that would be greater than negative 1. And all of these numbers are greater than negative 1. Now, the filled-in circle shows the number is included. It's used with less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. So if we have x is greater than or equal to negative 1, well, if it's an or equal to, it might be negative 1. So we use a closed filled in dot because it might be negative 1. See? It's greater or equal to. So our arrow is going to the right to show that it could be greater, but we also have the filled in dot here to show that it's or equal to. We can use the addition or subtraction properties of inequality to solve an inequality. We can graph our solution on a number line, then check our solution for accuracy. If we have x plus 2 is less than a negative 3, we see this plus 2, so we use the subtraction property of inequality and that will help us isolate this x to one side of the inequality. If we have minus 2 and minus 2, well, that'll eliminate this plus 2. We'll make a 0 pair. And on this side, we'll have a negative 5. We know that x is less than negative 5. Now, we don't know the value of x, but we do know it's less than negative 5, and it doesn't include 5. There's no or equal to here. We just know it's less than negative 5. So we use the open circle for not included, and our arrow is going to go less than negative 5. So remember, when it goes to the left, it's less. When it goes towards the other side of 0, it's greater. 
So it might even be a negative five and one tenth. That would be like right here. That would be less than negative five. It could be negative five and one hundredth. That would be even closer to the negative five. Or it could be negative five and one thousandth. That's still less than negative five. It could be any one of those. We check our solution by substituting a solution from the shaded part of our graph into the original inequality. So we could pick anything that is in this shaded part. I chose negative six. That's in the shaded part right here. Negative six plus two is less than negative three. I put that in the place of x. Now we can use the subtraction property and we can do a minus two and a minus two and that'll eliminate this plus two and give us a negative five on this side of the inequality. We have negative six is less than negative five. Well, that's true. The lesser number is farther left. Negative six is less than negative five. We could even try negative five and one tenth in place of x. And we would subtract two from each side of the inequality and eliminate this plus two and have a negative five on this side of the inequality. And we would have negative five and one tenth is less than negative five. Well, that's true. Negative five and one tenth is right here. And that's less than negative five. See, if it was on this side of the negative five, it would still be in the negative fours. This would be like negative four and nine tenths, see, before it got to negative five. So negative five and one tenth would be right here. It is less than negative five. So that's true. Here we have a plus three is greater than or equal to five. We can use the subtraction property of inequality and do minus three minus three to get rid of this plus three. That's going to give us a 2 on this side. 5 minus 3 is 2. So we have a is greater than or equal to 2. And because it has or equal, we're going to fill this in because it might be 2. It might also be greater. So we need to go to the right with our arrow, with our shaded area and our arrow. a is greater than or equal to 2 also means 2 is less than or equal to a. Well, it's saying that this 2 could be less than or equal to a. We have a is greater than or equal to 2, or we can reverse it. And instead of the 2 being on this side, we put it on the left side. Instead of our inequality facing this way, we flip it around and reverse it. And instead of A being on the left, we put the A on the right. This is true and this is true. We graph with this closed dot because A can be 2 or any number greater than 2. 2 is included as a possible answer. A, even if it's on this side, would still be greater than 2. It's saying 2 is less than A. That's still saying A is greater or equal to. Now I want to show you an inequality graphing trick. When an inequality is simplified with the variable on the left side, the inequality symbol points in the direction that the line should be shaded. We have a is less than 4. Our inequality symbol is going like this. We can picture it as the point of an arrow. So we're going to shade and draw our arrow going to the left. See, it looks like an arrowhead going that direction. And since a is less than 4, it doesn't include 4. See that? Now, here we have a is greater than or equal to 4. We can see this inequality symbol looks like an arrow pointing towards the right. Now, because it's got this or equal to, we're going to use the shaded in circle because 4 is included. The arrow points to the right. Now that's a pretty cool trick, but you have to remember that it only works if the variable is simplified and on the left side. Then that symbol is going to tell you which way the arrowhead is pointing. But 
we can still use the same trick if the variable is on the right side of the inequality symbol by just reversing the entire inequality. If we have 4 is greater than a, well, then we're going to put 4 on the right side, a on the left side, and we're going to reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. 4 is greater than a is the same thing as a is less than 4. See? Now the variable is on the left. We know the arrow is going to be pointing towards the left. And since there's no or equal to, we know it does not include 4. So open circle, like the O in not. And it's going to point to the left, just like the symbol's telling us to. But it's really important you remember that the variable is on the left side, okay? If we have 4 is less than or equal to A, we can flip the whole thing around, put the 4 on the right side, this A on the left side, and flip the sign around and reverse it. Now the variable is on the left. Now we can use it as an arrowhead. But remember, it's got or equal to. That means there's going to be a filled in dot. See? We know it could be 4 or a number greater than 4. So we finished 7.1b. We're going to move on to the third part, 7.1c. And now we're going to do all this, solving inequalities, but it's going to be involving multiplication and division. A lot of students get confused when they're graphing inequalities. Just remember, the inequality symbol will be like an arrowhead telling you which way the arrow should be pointing on the graph as long as that variable's on the left side. If it's on the right side, then you have to reverse the entire inequality, okay? Have a great day, and join me for the next lesson. Bye.